All right, one red booster clutch servo kit um, came today. Unfortunately, part of it are missing, so they are in the post now. Just contacted the supplier, and uh, he's going to send those out uh, today. Hopefully, so I'm going to take a gamble and try and get this fitted as best I can and wait for the parts to come. Unfortunately the two bits that are missing are bits that I actually need first, more or less, but it's not going to stop me getting on and getting a few things done anyway. But um, this kit is really solid build. It should be red, as the name suggests, but unfortunately on this case it's black. Uh, it doesn't really bother me, but some people will like the red one. It is a bit showy, the red one under the engine, but at the end of the day this will go under the hood and never be seen again, hopefully. Uh, my clutch is quite heavy, it doesn't bother me that much, I've driven other cars with lots of heavy clutches before so it doesn't bother me too much, it's a bit of a hassle in traffic at times but uh, generally I'm okay with mine, the problem with mine is it's just not engaging at a good place, I've had uh, master cylinder renewed, the slave cylinder renewed, it's got a new clutch on, it's got slick shift and um, I think if I bled it and persevered with it a bit more I'll get it to work but I've stripped the thread on my master cylinder and that's not helping things uh, which you'll see when I take it back out um, now what you do need you do need to retain your master cylinder which is going to go on this thing it's part of the kit uh, so I'll just go over the few bits of the kit obviously the main part it's all all heavy this stuff when the box came I was surprised how heavy it all was so um, it is a bit of weight going on the vehicle, again doesn't bother me that much considering it's what, nearly a one and a half ton vehicle. Um, so that's the main part, be careful with that, it's packaged nicely so I assume you have to protect all of this. This is the part that's going to go on the pedal box, uh, I'm going to take my pedal box out uh, to do this. Some people say you can do it with a pedal box in situ still. I'm going to take mine out because I want to renew the gasket that's on mine. Uh, I've got a new thicker gasket which you'll see as well so this is going to attach somehow. I've never fixed one of these before so I have got instructions that came with it and I'll just work, plod my way through it, see what happens. Uh, so that's going to go onto the pedal box. So here is the vacuum tank I guess you'd call it. Um, might look chunky, it doesn't weigh that much, it's solid though. Uh, you're looking at what? Two milli thick plate on it, something like that. Good heavy duty hoses. Uh, this goes under the wing, driver side wing on a right hand drive vehicle. Um, I'm going to put this on first, in theory, and see how that goes. Comes with a bit of hardware, those are the uh, brackets, a couple of brackets for that uh, tank. Don't know how they go on, the instructions are a bit vague, there's a few pictures but it's for different types of defenders so we'll see how that goes, a bit of guesswork I think. This is to replace the spring, I don't know if it's a replacement or just a backup for people because quite a lot of these are snapped on people's vehicles and this actually goes, uh, it's like a return spring on the clutch. I think it's more heavy duty so I'm going to use that regardless. I'll take the old one off uh, when I do the clutch box. And this, some apparatus, there's a bracket in there uh, which holds the sender, sensor unit and then the linkage as well which is part of the pedal assembly and the box. And finally we have got the, this is the braided hose for the hydraulic fluid, it taps into or extends off that unit as well, sender type unit, so and that there, some kind of connector, I'm not sure what, I think that's all the kit there. Oh, and finally, hoses for the vacuum, so it's like a T-piece pretty sure that's all there, not sure where it goes and um, I'll figure that out as well as I go away. It's all good heavy duty stuff and uh, we'll see how it goes together considering I've never put one of these on before.
right, so first up is removing this plate. And apparently you can slide the box into here. We'll soon find out. Right, here we go. Plan B, feed it in that way. I reckon even one handed I can get that in. And then just do all that. I've got some pipe stuck somewhere. Right, there we go. Step one, it does go in quite easy. Plenty of room in there. Especially when you've got two hands. And I've got the pipe work. Far side of this bracket. Now then somehow this is gonna be fitted sill no idea how there are two Z brackets one is actually longer than the other and they do have if you look there it's not actually bent square so this part is to allow for the slope of the wing here so the bent bits are going to go on the top the square bits are going to go to the actual booster box the short one is going to go to the back and the longer one on the front, obviously, so it can reach, span that distance as the wing comes in, if that makes sense. So, short one on the back, long one on the front, a bit weight shaped like that, so that goes to the top. So, I'm going to put those on next, and I think I'm going to go somewhere around here. And I've actually got clips in mine. I think the spacing's about 150, I've measured the spacing on the box is around 150 as well, so I think I can jiggle them. I'm going to bust these uh, plastic clips off and re-bolt them through here. That's a longer Z bracket, that's a shorter one. And I've gone through these two holes, I've had to punch out, this was like a bracket. It was holding on this line here. Um, so I've actually punched those two out and haven't replaced it with these, which isn't a bad thing. Everything's loose at the moment. Quite fiddly to get the uh, nut on the back side of here. It's quite tight, and that's why I've left everything loose, so I can just jiggle it around a bit better. And uh, what I did do, I ended up putting a bit of grease on my thumb, and putting the nut on there, and then just feeding it in from the back like that, and you can finger tight these. I've got them started. I'm gonna get this into the best position possible. Uh, some people recommend a bit of insulation or packing in here. I think I've got some of that insulation you put on copper pipes. Uh, so I'm going to stick that round just to stop it vibrating on the wing. And just check for holes to make sure I've got no holes or water ingress to get into here. And then I'll cap this thing back off. And as you can see, that's where the pipe is. I don't know if it's in the right place or not. That's where I've got it running. And we'll see where that ends up. Alright, so there we go, that is packed in. I was going to put some padding in there, but um, that's pretty solid. Once I've tightened all the brackets down, um, that's not going anywhere. So you can see where I fitted it, those two points there. And if you can look underneath just, you can see where the Z brackets are on there as well. It's a bit fiddly to get to, but um, not horrendous. So apparently also you have to trim some of these fins down because obviously it's going to sit and bash on there. So I'll see how mine sits there. So you can see it sits pretty proud of that, so it's going to need a bit of adjustment there. I guess I could move it down a little bit. Let's see about that. That's probably sitting a bit too high on these, so I could lower it on those. And also, I'm not sure if those are maxed out, the ones below or not. I could also lower it on there. I'm going to have a play around and see what works best. I want to limit the cutting of this.
know if you're taking a few milli off there, it's not pretty, but it'll do. You'll probably trim those off with some of those metal cutters, but it saves me time. I've just done the first three fins, and hopefully, that should get me uh, low enough to get this bolted back on. Looks pretty good to me. Right, this all looks very familiar. The dreaded clutch pedal box. There they are, the dreaded bolts. I'm better prepared to take them on this time. I've got a air assisted ratchet. Uh, difficulty with these is access, and you, only, you can't even get a quarter of a turn on them, so it takes forever to get them out. Uh, it is possible with a couple of ratchets and wobbly bars and all that bit, but hopefully, I'm going to get a, a ratchet on there and these should come off pretty quickly, that's the theory. Right, that was so much easier with that driver. It's going to be harder to put them in because I don't like to talk stuff up with a, a ratchet, but that... That cut the time down to about five minutes, if that, getting those out. Whew. Right, that's the bolts out. I've broken the seal on the gasket. Need to take the uh, electrical connector off here. And also the pipe over here, which is a 13mm socket. And I need to, once I've got it wiggling about a bit, get these two, or this bracket off with these two uh, screws, so I can take the electrical part off. I'll probably unhook those anyway, but I'll take it all off in one, because I've done it before. The bracket's off, electrical connector's off, and the union pipe, which is back here, that's off. Next we need to, is a, I think it's an 8mm bolt, right down the bottom of this plastic foot. And that needs to come off, and then that whole assembly needs to slide over. And then there's a bracket that goes on, which moves this further out the way, but I don't have the bracket at the moment. But I'm going to get this off because I know for a fact it makes taking this box out a lot easier. So I've got this loose, pretty much loose. The pipe works tied up a bit. And there's like a plastic foot at the back which sits on a lip. And there. Uh, and you just pull it back. And it breaks this free. I wish I'd known that the first time I did this. 
doing the cylinder, last cylinder, made it a lot easier. So that's now free to move about. It's a case of riding this box out somehow before over these pipes. It's a bit of a mess on, but now I've got the room, should be easy enough. All right, there we go, that's where the box was. Came out pretty easy in the end, came out a lot easier than it did the first time I was messing on with it. That's from a past experience, I guess. See the front, the expansion, it's got like a U on it and it clips over here. So once you've got the front bolt off, this fella just slides back over and then it's loose. I would take this off as well. It does drip water when you take it off. I took it off last time, it just gave me a bit more relief for it to be able to drag the box out, but um, I was able to manhandle this one out. But I will be taking this off to put it back in. It does drip, but if you're quick enough, uh, you don't lose much fluid. So I've got to tidy it round there, dry up of any brake fluid or hydraulic fluid that I've dropped. This needs to be fully wound back. You can see where I've been playing with the adjustment of the foot pedal. Mine wasn't high enough, should be 140 milli off the foot well floor, um, excluding the carpet. So this needs to be, for this setup, needs to be cranked all the way back out, which more or less is anyway from me fiddling around with it. Um, so I crack the rest of these off and I'll have a look at the mess inside here that I created with the strip thread. This is all just sealant from before, it's worked pretty well that. Good, it's pretty clean. I don't know if I'll use that again or not, I may do. Let's see if I can clean that up, I think I can clean that up. This is a legendary 13 millimeter modified socket which you're going to need to cram in this box it's just a regular one with the ground off the round as much as you dare really and um, it just helps getting in there now next bit's going to be noisy but it's a case of me i'm trying to undo this bolt uh, which will allow me to remove the rest of the assembly but this is on really badly stripped thread and so are the ones in here so i'll do my best with it air gun Right, that's off. That was a pain as I thought it would be. That's why I couldn't adjust it before. Some more sealant, and that's sealant as well. Right, next up, there's two bolts holding this fella on. Pretty easy to do. I've got the air gun with me, so I'm going to use it. I don't really like using this, but I'm getting lazy. His hands are cold. One out. Come on. You cover that. And that's pretty much the destruction part done. You can see on there the cross threading. It's a right mess. So I'll pop the circlip off and remove that, and then this is ready to go back on once I've cleaned it off and removed this. I had a read of the instructions. These are a nightmare to understand. Uh, they're very vague. The pictures are terrible. You can't actually see what you're supposed to be looking at. Um, it's just a bit of a nightmare using them. These are the ones that came with it. I've looked at two lots online and all three of them are slightly different so they all vary again mine has come part of it is pre-assembled so some of the instructions aren't relevant um, and I have to take the word of the person that's assembled it for it to be right I don't know if all the parts are there there's no parts list I already had to call the guy back for two bits that were missing I think there could even be another one so that's going to be an interesting call um, he's already sent the two parts out first class delivery and I think there's going to be some more bits so 
we're going to see how that goes not sure about that yet we'll see when I come to the actual fitting part right there we go slotted that circuit in with the washer and make sure you get the right orientation I need to strip that top bit down but I'll do that when I come to installation I'm going to look at the next bit now which is the vague bit Alright, so this is where it gets confusing with the pipe work. There is an illustration of what gets wired to where. Some say cut the pipe, some say don't. I haven't got a clue. Um, what I do know is that's 400 millimetres. There's supposed to be one that's 400, one that's 300, and one that's uh, the short fellow, which you can easily make out. And the 400 one goes to, I haven't got a clue, uh, that one. I haven't got a clue, and that one I haven't got a clue either. So somehow, I'm going to tee into that. Some say you cut this pipe 8 centimetres, which is going to be down here somewhere. Um, but to me, you could tap into there. I don't know how well that's fitted. I don't know if you cut into this, and then you use a Jubilee clips to connect it. I don't know if you use a Jubilee clip on there. Some pictures I see of the Jubilee here. Some have a totally different setup there. Haven't got a clue. And I think one of the pipes goes to this tank here, which I've now put away and fitted in place. I should have left all of that loose. Because one of those pipes on that T piece that I showed go onto here, I think. Hmm, nightmare. Okay, so this is how mine came, it's already pre-assembled for the most part I have no idea if it's the right way around or not No idea if they're all tightened up properly I haven't got a clue I mean, That's like a lock nut but it's as loose as can be I'm meant to go a specific way around One of them without the clevis currently on which has the bend in the other one, get him up is straight so if you look at how yours goes together I'm assuming, I'm hoping mine's correct I don't even know how that goes on oh, which way around it goes right, I'm going to have to do some uh, looking at pictures I think and see how this goes together alright, you know things aren't going well when you've got the instructions out here we go. First of all, I have to take this thing back apart. No wonder the lock nuts weren't tight. So that comes off. I'm going to just leave it in situ so I get the orientation for it. Maybe not. I'll take that out. Right, so it goes that way around. So I remember. Next up, we need this thing, and I'm reading off the instructions here. So all of this setup, no idea. So what it's saying. I think what I need I don't know if that's one unit or not I think that's what I'm after Not entirely sure yeah, that's one cast piece. So looking at the picture, we need this fella. And it comes from the underside, so the nut goes on the underside of those two. And tighten that up. And that goes uppermost, right? So that's him done. You have to bear with me here. You can tell I'm winging it. There's a main bracket in position in the pedal box where it'll bolt to. I mean, it doesn't say where that's fit 
wanted to. It just says join that. How the hell am I going to join it when it doesn't say where? Right, they can come out. I'm just looking at pictures to try and get some guide as to where the hell it goes. Next up, this piece goes on here. You can see they slightly staggered both of these. If I stagger it like that, it's not going to be square. Oh yeah, maybe. So that needs to go on like that, I think. set up there, yeah, we oriented, I totally lost how it was before I took it apart so that's how it's going on there, big nut on the bottom if there's such a thing as top and bottom, I'm just going to tighten those right so that's those tightened up, I think we're good next up, main bracket has to go in the pedal box do not bolt at this point. Okay, put this in the pedal box. Right, I've had a look at the instruction manual again and it's absolutely horrendous. Um, just looking at the pictures rather than the text, I reckon that has to drop in like that. You don't bolt it up yet. And then this thing, no idea. I'm assuming just going to drop one of the nuts off it. it goes in on this side right take those out take that out just going to do a trial fit first of all to see what goes where because none of it makes sense Take that out the way. That one in there. And what's the difference? One has a captive, like a thread on there, and one doesn't. That goes there, it's too high. So that goes there. That's more central, isn't it? I think. I think that's more central there. So I reckon the one with the bolt on. It's just been like a captive bolt, if you like. That. And goes at the bottom somehow somewhere this comes through somehow can I go in that way or not? Yeah. Right so that's the setup I have I fed this linkage in through the inspection chamber here it goes in with the fight the threaded bolt or captive bolt goes on to the bottom of the setup I'm going to put the other one in there this needs to go through where the old master cylinder rod used to go through one nut is left on the back side and one is going to go on there in a minute um, I've taken this plate off which needs to go back on the main assembly just so I could thread this through. It says something about that being left vertical, no idea. Um, let's put the main cage part on and then I'll bolt this thing all together. Again, make sure that is on 
the left hand side of the pedal. That is the feed through there. Like that. And then it's a case of bolting this thing up. Still orientated like that with the pedal at the bottom as it would be in the car, that's where your bulkhead goes. Uh, so this fella needs to be vertical when you finish, tighten it all up. You've got that support that is going to be for your hydraulic line and that goes obviously left hand side and lower, helps you orientate it a bit, which I couldn't get orientated. And looking at the inspection side, you can see if I drag that up, you can see where I've bolted through, and there's just enough to nip that up in there. You don't want it too tight, also, you don't really want any movement in the clear movement. Now, I was able to tighten mine because I've got pre drilled mine at the back. It just helps to tighten that up, get a spanner on it a lot easier. Uh, hopefully I won't have to do any more adjustment to that. Um, this has been wound all the way back. I'm not sure if I've stated that already. That has to be wound all the way out and then that's locked up. Um, I think that's pretty much... I'm sort of happy with how that's come together, considering I'm just looking at pictures. This clevis pin I think needs to come out and I think that needs to come out it's installed so next up I have no idea yet again I'm just literally looking at pictures to try and figure this out very right, next up it's a case of putting the ceiling plate on and for me I'm also going to be putting the bung on I've got the original gasket it's not great um, but also not bad and I'm gonna double up with some sealant as well on both of them So I seem to be making something that's really easy um, look to be really difficult and it's only because of the instructions. Once you've got it in place it's like oh yeah moment. Um, but this is what I'm working from, I mean I'm working from rubbish pictures, a um, bit of text on this printed, this is what came with it. Uh, online there's this installation which is similar to mine but not the same. And the pictures I can't zoom in to see, that's as far as I'll zoom, so I cannot see how things are orientated but sometimes there's a picture which isn't relevant to the installation part I'm doing but it will show me how things go which is what I'm doing uh, at the moment so it is easy to fit once you know how it goes together so a bit of research and I'm just plodding away keep making forward steps at least it's going in the right direction and I have less and less parts to worry about I'm still not sure if everything's there We'll find out shortly and um, I don't know how to cut the pipes either yet so we'll find out shortly with that.
comes a point we'll have to make a decision. So next up, still got the box here, um, just drying up the sealant. Now then, where is... Right, next up we have the diverter, which should go on one way. And the way it goes is, if you can see the curve on that one, so you've got two different shape plates, the curved one, and in my case it doesn't have the clevis pin type set up on, and so this one will go to the rod thus somehow, and I need to get that clevis pin out, so that needs to go in there on the bar. And I've looked at some pictures and the nut goes onto the left hand side, I think. Put him in. Make sure and orientate that. Yeah, that'll go in. That lines up with him. Put that pin back in. Alright, so he's going to need a tap in. He's not playing the game at the moment. Don't really want to bash that too hard. Just check for movement. Yeah, pretty good. Split pin. These split pins are already in, so I've misshaped them already before I've even had a go at them. Got that in a good position. So it doesn't snarl up on anything. Next, this has to be tightened down. One nut, these are 17 millis. You do it so it's not binding. You just don't want any play in it, really. I'll be happy with that, I think. Chase it up with a second lock nut. And tighten those up. And just keep checking, it's got plenty of free movement on there, which it does. Okay, with that, this is going to have to out. Not sure about that. Right, so that's that install. That's into part one. Make sure you check out part two if you're installing this. I've had to cut it short because it's going to be too long otherwise. Now, after reviewing this video, I've um, come to the conclusion it does look harder than it actually is. If you'd installed one of these and then you looked at this video, you'd be thinking, wow, he's made that look difficult. But first time round, it is confusing. The pictures aren't good. The instructions aren't so good. But once you've done one, or once you plod your way through this and see it, it does become a lot easier. And don't be put off getting one of these and putting it on. They are not that tricky to install. If I came to do it again, I mean, the time it would take would be a quarter, if that, of the time it's taken so far. So stick with it. It's not that difficult and it all makes sense in the end.
Right, so things I would do different would be to leave the wing panel off where you put the vacuum box first of all, leave that off and also sit it as low as you possibly can and also just make sure that the screws that you're putting through that in the end do not penetrate through that vacuum box. It is quite tight. You may need to cut some of those screws off. I did actually check mine when I put them in. I kept feeling underneath to make sure they weren't penetrating it um, but I didn't make that very clear. Um, the other things I would do would be make sure you take out the clevis pins and the split pins as well and make sure you grease those up as well when you put them back in and also the adapter um, I think that's what it's called make sure you grease that up as well just to make sure when it all goes back together it's pretty fluid in movement